Wait, what did you say? Oh, shit. <laughs> Hold on, Kennedy, where are you at? <laughs> He's gone before we got the vacuum. You're in my view. <laughs> Drilled, putting some silicone on there. Half inch drawer. And then since there's a nut going on the back side, we'll put some red Loctite on it. And we're just gonna send it. Whatever happens, happens. It's too late now. All right, Joseph? True. <laughs> Good morning everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is part three of the single turbo Mustang. So, as you guys saw, we actually figured out the oil pan that night in part two. I just didn't want to put that whole clip in there, so I just put it at the beginning of this video. Um, but when I got back, Brady had come over and we kind of reevaluated the whole oil pan situation. You know, it is a plastic oil pan. We were afraid to drill on the side because we weren't sure how clean we could get the oil pan however at the front of the oil pan there's probably like a four inch gap where the windage tray does not sit and you can actually sit right there and just wipe it and vacuum it while you drill so our biggest fear was getting plastic into the oil pan and not being able to get it completely clean if you have a metal oil pan or if you do it a different way you don't have this problem but the 1819 has a plastic oil pan so you've got to be very careful 
Um, even if you had a metal oil pan and there was a windage tray right there and you couldn't remove the windage tray, that would be a huge problem um, because the problem is you can't remove the windage tray. I don't know why, but maybe it's because it's plastic. They did they decided to like rivet it or mold it in there. I don't know how they attached it, but anyways, we got it figured out. We think <laughs> we ended up putting the AN fitting on the front of the oil pan. We're pretty sure it's gonna clear the lower underdrive pulley and it's gonna clear the steering rack and all that. So this morning I'm headed over to Joseph's. Biggest thing gonna work on today is mounting the oil pan back up, which shouldn't be too bad, but pretty much putting the subframe back <laughs> back to the car and uh, just start mounting everything back up and then we can finally start routing the hot parts kit. So maybe today, We'll be able to get the oil pan back up, get everything bolted back up together, and then we can start mounting the hot parts and kind of see where everything lines up. So I'm kind of hoping that's how today goes, but you never know what happens. So, see you guys over there. Shout out Kennedy, coming through with the Starbucks. Where's she at, though? I don't know. There she is. What is that? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna torque the oil pan down. Got the torque sequence here. 18 inch pounds, 89 inch pounds, and then 45 degrees from there. So we'll start working. You just kind of follow the numbers. Pretty simple stuff. So, got a torque wrench, about to go at it. through no I'll show you a picture oh, okay. as as you but that is the problem right there so we're gonna have to relocate the fuse box and the PCM to the fender well other side doesn't look too bad probably have to bend a couple lines but that's what you get right yeah <laughs> that's what you get so guess we're moving a lot of the electrical stuff all right so not the ideal situation but we're going to have to move the fuse box and the PCM, which is right underneath it. We're pretty much going to mount it under the headlight, which a lot of people have actually done. Not so much on the 18, but on the previous S550s. A lot of people have done that. There actually used to be a kit for it, but that company went out of business. So we're going to have to make kind of our own kit. So essentially, we're going to pull the harness back through the fender well right there and then run it to the front, mount the fuse box somewhere over here, and then figure out which wires we got to extend. Get back to work over there. Quit messing around. <laughs> All right, so I've actually got to pull the plugs this way because they won't come out the other way. So try and pull that whole harness through the firewall and then pull it out and then run it back through the firewall. So when do you think this will be done? Uh, two weeks. From today? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. From a week from now. That's not bad. That's not bad. I gotta go to Vegas, so... In two weeks? Yeah. Three weeks. Then yeah, we'll get done easily. <laughs> and if you guys are wondering, can you tell them where the race is at and what time? Maybe they can come out and watch? Well, we haven't decided. So, race is gonna be Kansas International Dragway, Wichita, Kansas, or 
XRP in Denton. yeah Dallas. It's just south of Dallas. Okay. One of those races. And they're both Friday and Saturday. So. Are we going to win. We're not going to lose, right? We are going to win. <laughs> so he's almost done fabbing this up. He got this big new air to water. Good for XXXX horsepower. Can't say it. And uh, now you just got to do the bluff valve, shorten the exhaust, and that's it. Yeah. It'll be around here in a little bit. Well, faster than this will be. Unlike the Mustang. <laughs> All right, so we just pulled the plugs out of the firewall right there. Then we're gonna go towards the engine bay and pull them all out. doing down there Dave? Well at least the manifolds are getting mounted. I think he's trying to tighten the bolts. <laughs> pretty tough we to get really to. don't know what's going on there but <laughs> we're going in blind. You see that manifolds on and if you on. come look over here look at that guy. That one was pretty oh, easy. Oh yeah. They don't give you much room. Look though. at that. <laughs> Don't put wiring on the floor. <laughs> I agree. I mean, it is lower than I thought. Mm -hmm. I thought it would sit straight up. Well, I think you clocked a turbo, so I think it'll still okay. appear straight up. So there it is. About to mount the turbo. It's lining up not too bad. Probably have to move a few things. The trans lines are in the way of the wastegate. Lots of heat tape <laughs> and definitely some adjusting. There it is, the turbo's mounted. Obviously we got some things to move around, lots of stuff to heat wrap. This car's gonna have more heat wrap than horsepower. And uh, so this is you versus the guy she told you not to worry about. Holy moly, that's huge. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> My goodness. So Joe finished his. Got his new, the blow valve mounted over here. We'll sensor over there. Just finished the exhaust. Shortened it a little bit. Looks freaking good. Hopefully he does this good work on mine. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there it is. Obviously, Joseph said we got to move these trans lines. They're way too close. And the wastegate's got to go right there. So I'll probably end up making a bracket, moving the trans cooler down. This side seems to be all right. Just got to heat wrap everything. Other wastegate's going to go here. I've already got a dump tube to follow the header. And then we got to mess with the wiring. Well, we'll probably do that later on. <laughs> Try and get the uh, actual turbo kit built. But yeah, she's David, coming along. <laughs> can I have my lawnmower turbo back? <laughs> Look how small it is in there. <laughs> Ugh, that's what she told me. All right, so for part three, we pretty much got the oil pan back on, got the subframe mounted back up, torqued that all down, torqued the oil pan down. Hopefully I did it right, or else the oil pan's gonna be leaking. Uh, but we did get the oil pan tapped, and we got the fitting on there for the oil return line. We um, actually mounted the headers, got them all bolted up, put the engine mounts back on, dropped the motor back down, so it's pretty much on its own weight now. Uh, we are able to actually mock up the whole hot side kit with the turbo, which was really awesome to finally see. That was like a morale booster after some of the negativity that we had to work through. Um, the biggest thing for me 
that really sucked was <laughs> realizing that the engine harness on the passenger side on the frame rail was hitting the manifold. So we decided to pull the whole entire harness on that side, pull it through the frame kind of towards the tire as you saw, and we're gonna relocate the fuse box and the PCM under the headlight. A few people have done that online. There actually used to be a kit for the Mustang but that company went out of business, so we're kind of on our own for doing that. It doesn't look like you have to extend too many wires. Obviously, you'll probably have to extend the power wire, a ground wire, um, and possibly the starter wire. That one looks like it might be too short, but we may run into more issues and have to extend more wires. It just really depends on how everything lines up. So pretty much we need to de-loom and take some of the tape off and kind of see where everything lays out. But I've made a list here and there's just, there's a lot of stuff we still have to do. And we've already got, I don't even know, probably over 20 hours in it, maybe 20 hours, I don't know. We worked Thursday night on it, Friday, and then pretty much all day Sunday. We didn't get to work on it Saturday, but I mean, here's some of the list just so you guys can kind of realize what else we have to do. This is the problem when building your own kit, is not only does you have to build everything Besides the hot parts kit, everything else we have to make on our own, it's the little stuff that adds up. Like we have to extend the O2 harnesses um, because they're not long enough. Whereas if you bought a kit, they probably would have sent you O2 extenders already or they'd have gave you something to extend them. We've got to build all the oil feed line. We've got to build the oil feed line, build the oil return line with the fittings. Um, we've got to, you know, mount the intercooler. We've got to figure out how we're gonna run the cold piping. I mean, we already know how we're gonna run it, but we've gotta build it from scratch and figure out where we're gonna bend it, where we're gonna put couplers, where it's gonna be welded. We've gotta weld the blow valve flange. We've gotta weld the MAF flange. Um, we have to move the overflow coolant tank out of the way. Um, you probably saw, and I actually didn't mention it last night, but the crossover pipe from the driver's side manifold is actually hitting the radiator hose, but Actually, CG Fab included a radiator hose. So besides the wiring harness on the passenger side, the hot parts kit actually fits really well. Luckily, the AC is out of the way because that would have been a really tight fit with AC. It says it clears the AC, but it does say you have to build one of the lines or rebuild one, so that's why we took the AC out. Um, another thing we noticed, and I don't know if I should or not, but the way the trans lines come up for the trans cooler, the manifold on the passenger side literally runs right into them and the wastegate sits right there. So I don't know if when CG Fab mocked this kit up, if they actually had a 10 speed car in there. It says it fits 18, 19, but who knows if it was a manual or if it wasn't even 18 or 19 because it hits the trans cooler lines. So we're gonna have to move the trans cooler down and hopefully it'll bring the lines down a little bit because it is in the way. There's no way that can fit. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of shit to do. We've got to heat wrap the whole entire hot side. We've got to heat wrap any wires that are near it. On the driver's side, we don't need to move any of the wiring, but we do have to heat wrap all that. There's a couple brake lines we need to relocate also. Um, I did order a new overflow coolant tank. It's a little cylinder shaped one, so it'll probably sit on the passenger side because we got to get the big plastic ugly piece of shit out of there. It's just taking up room and there's no way we can build a cold side with that. Um, I do have a cash can, so I'll have to mount and install that because I don't want any blow-by going back in there. Um, we've decided we're going to do two oil changes, so when the car is completely done, which who knows when that'll be, um, we're going to fill it up with oil, let it idle, and just drain it just to be safe in case there's something in the pan. We might as well just let it idle, run a little bit of oil, and just drain it, and then put some fresh oil in it. Boost controller is supposedly on its way. It's an electronic boost controller. I'll show you guys that when it comes in. Uh, we still gotta install that. And speaking of boost controller, we still gotta run all the vacuum lines. So there is a long list of things we still have to do. Uh, but we are finally starting to make some good progress. Tonight, I don't have too much time to go over there and work on it because I have to train a client pretty late. So I think what I'm gonna do when I go over there tonight is just drain the radiator fluid, remove the overflow coolant tank, get that out of the way, replace the radiator pipe at the same time, and then that gives us room to start building the cold side piping. That way tomorrow or Wednesday, Joseph can start building the cold side piping and I can start working on either heat wrapping the wires, heat wrapping some of the hot side. I mean, there's a whole list of things to do. So I think that's what I'm gonna do tonight. Like I said, don't have too much time to go over there, but just wanna close out the video and uh, 
The reason why I haven't done a cost comparison yet is because I'm still buying small fittings here and there. Like today I had to go buy two 45 degree 10 and fittings and that was $55 for two, two fittings. <laughs> so I'm gonna wait till the end, make sure we have everything and uh, I'll go over that. Obviously, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you should've just got a kit at this point, but that's, I didn't want a kit. I didn't want to run a kit that everyone else has. I wanna do something that's my own and it's a custom kit. And a uh, huge shout out to Joseph and Brady for helping me with this. But uh, it's gonna be really cool once it's done. And the engine bay is gonna look super clean once it's done, now that that fuse box is out of there. If you guys haven't or seen or don't remember my Mustang, there's just wires and the big fuse box sits right there in the passenger corner and then it's got the PCM right there and there's just a ton of wires right there going to the battery and there's plastic shit everywhere. So with removing the AC and relocating the fuse box and the PCM, when it's all said and done, the engine bay is gonna look super clean. It's just right now, it just seems like a lot of work and it's a little overwhelming. But we're gonna attack it one night at a time. Um, there's really no time frame. However, I am using Joseph's garage, so I'm trying to get my ass out of there as soon as possible because I'm sure he wants his garage back. Uh, but he's super nice about it and he's really willing to help. So I got a really good support system and a good team behind me and we're just gonna keep knocking it out. So I hope you guys are enjoying these videos because I'm really not filming that much. We're just really trying to work on the car, but I really wanna take you guys along for the ride. And there's gonna be so many videos once the car is done. Um, we just gotta get it to that point. Speaking of that, I did order a triple pump fuel system over the weekend. So the only thing I'm missing is injectors. Now after injectors, you gotta remember I still need, um, you know, I still need tires, I still need half shafts, I still need drive shafts, I still need suspension, like I still need all this other shit to get the car down the track. However, at least we'll have the power. So I'm kind of looking for injectors right now, trying to see if I can find some slightly used or open boxed ones for cheaper because injectors are freaking expensive. Luckily, Lethal Performance was having a huge sale on the fuel systems. So I saved a ton on the fuel system, um, but that is ordered. So not sure when that'll come in, but that's a whole other deal within itself. We gotta run a feed line from the tank all the way to the front and then a return line all the way back. You gotta run all the relays and the harnesses and it's a whole ordeal. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this content. If you haven't, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you comment and like the video. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Snapchat at Vanvy39 and we'll see you guys on the next one.